All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. Okay, so so far so good. We can read different uh, profile profiles from this location right here, but we have a bit of a problem. So let's say I go to my timeline. And then I go back to my profile because as you can see, the link to my profile is profile.php. So if I simply click that, I will get an error. And the reason is that we don't have an ID there and it's looking for an ID. So the error is an identified index ID on line nine in profile.php. So all we have to do is go to our profile.php and see what's line nine, which is this one. So this is the variable that doesn't exist. The get ID doesn't exist because we don't have it in our URL. So the right thing to do is to first check if it exists before we try to use it. So to do that is very simple is we go up here. We must create an if statement and say if is set like that. So we are checking if it is set that ID right there. And then we put all our statements, all of this inside there. Let's use the tab key to move everything over like so and hit OK. So this should sort the problem out. There we go. So if there's no ID, it goes ahead and simply loads the profile of the active user, which is what we want. All right. So enough of those corrections. So let's go straight into uh, security. So now with your website, <coughs> of course, there's, there's going to be need for security because like it or not, people are going to want to hack your website, maybe for fun or for profit, whatever the reason. And sometimes people may end up simply breaking it, not trying to hack it, but if you don't put precautions, they may break the website one way or another unintentionally. So this is why we need to add a bit of security to our website. Now, this is a list of things we can do to improve security. Uh, I hope you can read this. I'm trying to increase the font size. There we go. All right. So these are the steps we're going to learn in order to protect our website. Okay. So this, the first type of protection we're going to need is from what is called SQL injection. Okay. And in here, we're going to look at what is variable escaping, what are prepared statements and what is HTML escaping. And then we're going to look at input whitelisting and blacklisting. So all this will make sense after I explain it. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to, after that, we're going to go to password hashing. And then we're going to look at how to limit the tries of somebody trying to log in as a security precaution. And then thirdly, we're going to look at security through obscurity. Now, this simply means uh, hiding things that the user doesn't need to see as a way to secure your website. OK, we'll do that by limiting the error info we give. And then we're going to look at how to hide certain files and how to add an index.php file in folders as a way to protect ourselves. So these are the basics of web security. And of course, please remember that you cannot have absolute security. OK, it's not possible to have a website that can never be hacked because hacking comes in many ways. For example, you could have the same way you cannot have an impenetrable lock on your house. It's just not possible, but it doesn't mean you cannot try to protect your house. You might have the best lock or the best security system on your house, but it's only as good as your weakest link. And that is somebody could simply wait for you to open the door and walk in with you. Then your security system becomes completely useless in the same way with your website. You can have all the security that you want, but you might leave your password on your table on a piece of paper and somebody will simply log in as you. So all those things are things to consider when you are making a website. So let's go over 
one by one and look at SQL injection in this very case. All right, so what is SQL injection? Now, an SQL obviously has to deal with the, the database because this is my SQL database, okay? So SQL injection means somebody could put in uh, their own SQL into your website. Now, when they put an SQL, they might execute something, okay? <coughs> so for example, if we go to uh, our database here and click on SQL right here, this is where we can type in a few uh, SQL statements for our database to execute. So for example, I could want to uh, load a, uh, a record. If I go to my structure here, and I go to the table users, for example. Now, as you can notice here, there are several rows and each one has an ID. So I can retrieve a record using the ID, the user ID, the name, or whatever it is right here, whichever column I want. Now, let's say I want to retrieve a record uh, number four with the ID four. So in the SQL here, I'm going to type something like uh, select or from users where so i'm going to add a where clause here and say where id is equal to four and if i hit go on this one i'm going to get my record which is this one right here so believe it or not somebody can do exactly this through your website at the top here so let me give an example so as you can see here on our profile we have profile is equal to id and there's an id at the top but because this id is open to anyone i can simply go in and type in something like id is equal to 400 and four, or 440 or whatever number that is i choose and as you can see the because it can't find uh, uh whatever that uh uh record is it simply loaded my current profile which is good however let's take a look at how the actual query looks like so to do that we are going to go to classes inside classes and then let's load in the profile.php class here because this is the one that actually reads we're sending the id to that uh uh, the class so it's creating this query right here and then it's reading from the database now let me put an echo down here so we can echo the query and see how exactly the query is translated so if I refresh here what you will notice is that it's going to say select all from users where user ID is equal to 440 now if I wanted to, I can carefully craft my ID here to create some extra code down there. So for example, 440 here, I can put something like or one at the end there and hit enter. And what do you know? Uh, it says where user ID is equal to, let me zoom in a little bit more here. It says where user ID is equal to 440 or one. Of course, it's not going to find this one. But imagine if I put a semi, uh, this inverted comma here and I put another comma there. So for example, right at the top here, I put an inverted comma and then go to there and put another inverted comma and hit enter. Now look what has happened to the X SQL, okay? So it's saying select from users where user ID is equal to 440 or one, okay? Now, if you notice, or one is always going to be true because or one, one is always one, which is equal to true. So it's simply going to load the first record that it finds, which is exactly what we see here. If I click on the uh, show all, Oh, let me cancel that. Let me just hit this one here. So you see, this is the first record right here, and that's what's showing. However, I can simply go through the IDs here and retrieve any record that I want. So for example, again, at the top here, let me go up here. Instead of writing 01, I can simply say or 
uh, without that inverted comma, I'm going to say or ID is equal to, and then put uh, something like an inverted comma four, something like that. Hit enter. And as you can see, this is the SQL I have created. So it's going to look for where ID is equal to 440. And of course we know that 440 doesn't exist, but what I really want to retrieve is or ID is equal to four. And as you can see, I have loaded the profile with an ID that is actually equal to four, which is Mary. So as you can see, I've managed to manipulate my own website into loading something that it's not supposed to load. Now, this is simply a, a very simple example. I could do very malicious things here. I can say something like, or I can write an entire SQL here and say, or insert into whatever table this is. I can write a whole slew of things here, which are going to execute in my database. So this is very dangerous because somebody can come in here and simply delete all your tables or simply edit the information right here, simply using the URL of your uh, website. So this is what is called SQL injection. So SQL injection can also happen not only at the here, but also on the login page of your website. So how do I protect myself from this? So there are two ways to do this. One is variable escaping and the second one is prepared statements. So let's begin with variable escaping. So let's come back to this uh, very example right here. Let me uh, have that query right there and so that we can see what's going on. Okay, so we have this thing right here. So let's write all that stuff we had written. Uh, if I put 440 like that and say or uh, ID is equal to 4, something like that. Okay, so this is a statement we get. Now, instead of doing this, what we might do is go to our, right here where it's reading uh, the query, and then we escape this ID, okay? So to escape an ID, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ID is equal to add slashes ID. Now what add slashes does is it's going to look for all those special characters like the inverted comma uh, and any special characters like for example the double uh, line like that means a comment in MySQL. So it's going to look for all that and then it's going to escape all those. So as you have seen now it has added this slash right there and that slash over there to all these uh, special characters. Now, as a result, this query no longer, it, uh, what escaping does, let me explain it this way. What escaping does is that it tells MySQL to treat this inverted comma as part of the string here. This one as well as part of the string and not a special character. So in other words, what it's doing is it's saying user ID is equal to this whole thing as one string. So as a result, it's not going to find any uh, profile that has this kind of user ID. So it's going to return uh, false, which as you have seen here, it has loaded the default profile uh, of the user. So this is how you protect yourself. So every time you're getting information from a user, so for example, this ID is coming from a user input, which is the URL, and anyone can manipulate that. So every time you get a value that is not coming from your database or anywhere else, you have to add this add slashes to make sure that it is sanitized. Okay. So ID is equal to like that and it works out. Now the second thing you can do is what is called whitelisting. So this is what we are going to jump around and do. So where is that? Input whitelisting and blacklisting. Okay. So in this case, for example, we know that the ID will always be a number. So to avoid people typing things that are unwanted here, we can simply ask right here where we're saying if 
this is set, we can add an and statement here and say is numeric because we know that the ID will always be a number like that. So we'll put it there. So we're asking if the ID is set and it's also a number. So if it's not a number, ignore it. So this is what is called whitelisting because we are selecting very specific values that we can accept. So this is what is whitelisting. So if, for example, you, uh, you're asking a user to uh, log in, you must whitelist that information because you know that the user is only going to type letters and spaces and so on. So we're going to go more into whitelisting and blacklisting as we uh, learn some more here. Right now, we're simply doing variable escaping and this was just an added sample there. Okay, so, so far so good. We've learned how to secure ourselves and that's uh, it for SQL injection. So you can go and Google some more because uh, there's a lot involved in SQL injection that I might not have mentioned here and you can learn some more from Google. So the next one we're going to look at is HTML escaping and then we're going to look at prepared statements last. So from H HTML escaping to blacklisting and whitelisting and then we'll go to prepared statements. All right, so I'll see you in a later video.